my first zombie baby of the year. And a little story about the zombie baby. I, I like to do them in the memento mori. I want them to look like they are from the vintage photographs of the babies in the christening gowns who were taken after they were deceased. So that was that's always been kind of my thing I like to do with those dolls. I don't like to do the gory ones. I don't like to do, you know, super creepy ones. This one just came out really creepy. He has um, an interesting story. This is a Lee Middleton doll. And I bought this doll because it was already marked up and in really bad shape. So I said, hey, this would be a really great doll. And so I've had him for over a year and his face was already painted. I mean, I painted it and I left him kind of hanging around for about a year in my studio. And then he got damaged, which does happen. Uh, if you buy any of these dolls, you have to realize this is a vinyl doll with acrylic paints and acrylic sealers and glue and things like that. And stuff can da get damaged over time. They're not to be played with. You can carefully change their clothes. Uh, but you just can't be rough with them. You have to be real gentle because they will get scratched up and, the, you know, once that starts, well, what do you do? So anyway, I'm just putting that out there. And what happened with this doll is that I had, I'm going to say this several times during the video because I said it during different stages, that I had used an oil pastel on the original drawing I, which I'd forgotten about on the original design on the doll's face and I forgot that I had used oil and whenever I, I sprayed, I painted over, it had a sealer on it, so I don't even know why I did this. So I had it sealed. And then I came back and uh, did, you know, put a new white coat of paint on to, because it, like I said, got kind of beat up. So I um, did that. And then I went over it with, with uh, soft pastels. Now, working with soft pastels, I will tell you right now, is a lot harder than working with the oils. The oils went right on. I can remember it being not too difficult, but this was difficult. I did not finish the inside of the mouth and I was real careful around the lips because I knew this coming in and out would cause a problem. I think this is the original pacifier. If not, it does really well with this doll as far as going in. I did try other pacifiers with it and it can use a baby pacifier. One thing about my little outfit, all my outfits that I buy are secondhand and that they all have feet in them. For some reason, I but he's got really cute feet, so you're going to want to get some clothes that show off his feet. And you can make this a little girl look if you want to and change it to sweet little girl clothes. I just happen to like think with the blue pacifier and the brown hair, I decided I was going to make it this. So do anything you want to. Also, did not name the baby because I think that's... The new, I think of all the dolls that definitely the babies, they need to have their own names by whoever gets them. I want them to be very special to that person. Uh, these dolls wear about newborn clothes. I think zero to three gets a little bit big. It's all depending on the brand. This one, I forgot what size this one was, but I did try on some newborns and they worked really well. And I don't really like this zip tie. I had to take his head off to paint him. I didn't want to get the body dirty, and the um, only zip tie I had has a really big head on it like that, so it's kind of sticky outy. I am working on this baby doll, and I wanted to kind of give you a during stage. I don't have any before, but what I've done is I just, I sponged on my paint, and I left all these little creases. Oh, look, he's working. Let me see his little hand. I left them, you know, with, without any paint in them because... I wanted that detail. So, you know, trying to give this kind of skin like that adipose air kind of, you know, look to it. Like it's got a film of waxy film on it. Oh man, white on white. Again with the white on white. Hang on. Okay, there it is. Oh, no, I'm not liking it. Too much heat. So you can see on that one. And I'm taking. One of the things that I do is I have my fingernail file and I take uh, my charcoal and this one's a little bit harder one and I just kind of rub some off on it like that. And this is what I use. This is on my harder charcoals that don't give it up when you just brush on it. And then I kind of pounce my brush in and get some in it. This is my favorite brush in the whole world. And then I just come in and hit the seams that I want to be black because what I 
know for a fact is as you start working on your other colors, you get, um, you start smushing out your black. So it does really well inside the seams. Let me show you. So see now where I've left it, uh, it's, um, you can't really see the flesh color. A little bit in the background, but so it's not so black. But in all this where you see it's, it is smudging out, this, this part will smudge with the other colors. And I'm using a lot of colors. I have a very interesting palette going on. Let me see what I can do. If I can see it. I can't see if you can see it. But this is my little palette down here of my hot mess. These are sort of the flesh tones I've been using, and they're really the same color. I have a couple of yellows that are a little bit different, a little bit brighter yellow, and my white. Get with that one. I have, this is, oh, I have a brown brown, which is right here, and a darker brown, which is a hard brown, and an orange. This is my favorite color, this orange color. It just looks awesome. A couple of purples, and then my favorite blue that I have just used the mess out of. So these, and this, here's another black. And this is a soft black, so it's kind of worn down where I had been working on it. But like this one is a really hard black. It's just a broken off piece. And that, that's a good one to scrape and get the, it doesn't smear, it doesn't um, smudge out as well as like a medium hardness. I also have like white pencils and things like this handy if I decide to use them. So anyway, that's how I'm working with this. And I will get back to you on how it turns out. So this is what it looks like. I know it's really black right now, black and white, a lot of contrast. But as I work with it, it will tone down some. And then here's the back. So this was step one. So I sponged it. And then you know how you get the little uh, paint gloves? I had to scratch those off as I was working. Um, so then I came in with my darks first. Now normally in other materials, especially charcoals, you don't start with your darks you work with your uh you work light to dark and this way i because of how i'm doing it i'm having to work dark to light it's kind of weird well just black and then the other colors i just go kind of nuts with So while I have my baby naked, I just wanted to talk about it. It does have just the, oh, I don't know what they call this. I think this is called like one quarter arms. I mean, it's basically just got hands and a little bit of forearm. So it makes dressing it difficult because you always have to have something with sleeves. And the, uh, it's got the weighted, you can hear that crunchiness. It does have a stain on this leg. Like I said this doll was in really bad shape when I got it. I think this is discolored too. I did try um, Build a Bear Workshop makes a product that cleans up spots like this, and it didn't work. So I don't know how to get that out. 
This will give you a really good look at the poor little thing's face. Now, this doll did not come with a wig when I got it. I am including this brown wig. This is a size 11. Seems to fit really well. I, you know, if you want to put change the hair color, that would be great. I'm just going to put it in with T-pins so it can be easily changed. You kind of see my where the old wig had been glued on anyway. I came back and painted the hands and feet. You see a little color difference. I just, I guess, put a lot more yellow into it. Um, the other face has just gotten more color. And the feet and the hands, the feet are actually closer in color. It's just my hands came out really light, see? Even though I put them all together and I was trying to look at them all together to make sure just my arms came out really light. Now see, that doesn't look so bad when you look at it, but when you start comparing it to other things. The best size to find for it is a newborn. And of course you have to take it up in the neck so it'll fit better. And I had the sweetest outfit that I just really wanted to put it in, but it, the shorter sleeves and didn't work. But it would have been so adorable if it hadn't been for the sleeves being too short. And I just don't like that part showing. I'm just weird that way. I like just the doll part showing, which is why I tend to find dolls that have more arm than um, than this kind. But this one was just a lucky find, and it's a one of a kind because I will not go back to crackling dolls either intentionally, or whatever, because that's just not my thing. But, oh, and look, these eyelashes, they're just glued in with tacky glue. You can't pull on them. I mean, you pull them, they're going to come out. They're in there really good, but if you start messing with them too much, I would not mess with them too much. Because that's just the nature of these dolls. Um, you're working with materials that do their best to uh, work together. And this is what happens with when materials don't work together. And, and that is what a lot of people are doing. They're putting, like, glue uh and using because glue will resist the um latex or whatever these are acrylic paints <laughs> well, i said that but uh the and it causes these crackles and so did having that oil uh pastels coating on the doll but i will tell you what i remember i don't know why i didn't take a picture before i guess because it was kind of chipped up and i didn't like you know because it got messed up but no that's that's no this is a whole new look now this is, I did not finish the mouth out. For one thing, I think this works. The same thing when I did the hands, that I did not uh, finish the, you know, I just sponged over it and left that seam, you know, the inside the natural doll so that I could um, be able to get the dark in there and get that nice contrast. I left the mouth plain because this is gonna be going in there and this is what, I think this is the one that came with this doll because it fits really well. Uh, so, but I did try some other pacifiers. It will take a newborn nuck in, a, in, in UK. That's what it is. And it will, uh, let's see, and those, those ones that look like a nipple, it, it went in really well. So there's some other pacifiers you can try on this doll if you don't like that one. You can actually put real ones in there, but they have to be small. So I'm going to dress it and I'm making this little boy. But you can make it a little girl. It's all up to you. I just wanted to shoot a quick video of this uh, baby. This is how I like to do my babies. Um, I like for them to be in the vintage christening gowns. This christening gown's a little bit too big for this doll, which I, most of them I can alter. This one I can't. It's just how it's designed, you know, with the collar and everything. It can't be really messed with too much. Plus, this is very difficult fabric to sew on and it looked decent. Anyway, this outfit this doll's wearing has got a slip and the little dress and the coat. And this is not the hat that went with it. It's just bonnet that I had. It's just so precious anyway, and it goes well with it. And I paid a lot of money just for the dress. And I think I got the little hat with a couple of other hats in the listing on eBay. But I guess I'm just not ready to get rid of this dress yet. Because of the pacifier, to me, that's a little too contemporary. I have other dolls that are bigger than this doll that I'm saving this for. It's, they're Behringer dolls that they're sleeping and they're gorgeous and I just love them. And they fit this better. Being that this one has a pacifier, I just thought it looked too contemporary. So I'm going to sell it, you know, in the contemporary clothes. But anyway, I just wanted to get a shot of it in this gorgeous dress. It's just too precious. I could not end this video without putting this in. Yes, this is a real baby's coffin. 
it's a long story how I got this, but yes, yeah, someone had it and said, hey, I got something you need. It's, the story is just too creepy. But anyway, yeah, I love it when people think of me when they find a baby coffin. It actually came from a company. I mean, a, a funeral home. But the hinge is broken on it, so I, I can just use it for a prop. Anyway, it's got these little handles. Not that you can pick it up by that. They're not on there very well. I don't think at least. Maybe they tied in. Anyway, so this is the baby without her pacifier. And she looks just so sad. Let me get your little... Let me fix your little hair. Well, that'd be... This would be... Yeah. Go backwards. That would look really sweet. So, anyway. That's my baby in its coffin. And I'm going to take some pictures of it. Because that's what I do. Thank you.